thanks for watching this video. The, the goal of this video is to demonstrate a new use case with APM and Azure AD and how to leverage APM features with Azure AD. So far, I did several videos on the easy button use case. The easy button use case is pretty simple to understand. I have application on-premises, legacy application on-premises, or sensitive application on-premises, and I have perhaps some SaaS application or, or cloud application. And I delegate the authentication to Azure AD, the full authentication to Azure AD. So with the easy button, it takes a few minutes just to publish an application with Azure AD as an authenticator. So now the use case is to use APM uh, as an IDP as well. Okay, so Azure AD will delegate part of the, of the authentication to APM so that APM can know the, the password if I need HTTP form, single sign-on, or if I want to protect the credential, or if I want to do credential check. Okay, so the use case is Azure AD IDP chaining with APM, okay? So you can see the same kind of architecture, but now the user will provide some credentials, okay, to APM. So the final architecture is this one. As you can see, I keep my Azure AD as an IDP. It is the latest IDP in the chain. So it means the uh, Azure AD will issue the token. So, uh, the, the token, the SAML insertion. But APM would be used for the username and the password. So Azure AD will never ask for a, a, a password, okay? Azure AD would just ask, what is your username? Because I need to know who you are, which organization you belong to. Then Azure AD will forward, will redirect the user to, a, to APM. And APM will make, advanced, will make advanced control check, okay? And I can connect to third part solution to control the credential or I can encrypt the credential to protect the credential with data safe, for instance, with Adam's WAF. So let's do it. So first of all, I have a big IP with APM and Advanced WAF because I will, I will use some Advanced WAF features uh, in this demonstration. Uh, to do so, I will, uh, I will just encrypt the password. I will use the data safe, okay? But my, I want to use Azure AD as an IDP because my organization uh, rely, on, on, rely on Azure AD. So it's pretty simple, honestly. I have only two, two virtual servers. One virtual server is my front-end virtual server, my virtual server with APM. And I created an internal virtual server. And on this virtual server, I just assign my data safe uh, profile, okay? So in my policy, I have a data safe profile as you can see. To do so, I use the, the concept of the connector. It's, I, will, I will put in, a, in the description the link to the documentation, but it's just a concept of service profile connector. Okay, so it means please connect the virtual server, the front end virtual server with the internal virtual server so that the internal virtual server can make control check. On the, on the security side, of course, I have a data safe profile. Okay, that's it. Very easy. And this one is by default on this version 15.1.1. Okay, 15.1.1. What happens on the on the client side? So let's assume I, I'm a user. My organization has a federation with, uh, with Azure AD. Okay, so it means I have a sync between the on-prem Active Directory and the Azure Active Directory. And the IT made one change. On the Azure AD side, they changed the mod from cloud mod to federated mod. So it means Azure AD now will rely to a, an external IDP. This is IDP chain. So if I try to go to, let's say, a, a cloud application. So as you can see here, I have a WordPress running in Azure Cloud, not on premises, okay? This is just to show you that it works with any application anywhere. So when I'm gonna click on the on this SaaS app, and as you can see, the URL is 
azurewebsite.net. This application is configured with uh, OAuth authentication. It doesn't matter here because this is just between Azure AD and the SaaS app and, or in the cloud apps. But as you can see, the user is redirected to Azure AD login page, okay? The federation gateway from Azure AD. Uh, then I have to authenticate, okay? So I have some cookies, so I can I can use one of them. And my organization is emea.fyc.com. This is my organization. And my IT guys set this tenant, as already tenant, as a federated mode, okay? It's few PowerShell command. And when I select this user, the user is redirected to my APM. And as you can see now, I'm on premises, okay? And the username is already uh, already set, populated, and I just have to provide my, my password. If we have a look, if we inspect element, you can see, let me try to open it better. You can see here, the name of the field is changing. Okay, so it should be Password, but now it's not password, it's this value. And when I'm going to enter the password, if I go to network, the password will be encrypted. Okay, so now if I log on, of course, I'm redirected to, uh, to Azure. I say, no, I don't care. And I'm redirected to my application. Okay, so far, so good. So now, if I want to show you the, the encrypted password, let's do it again. So let's do it again. I enter my password and if I have a malware in my in my browser, the malware can grab my password. Okay, if I have an extension with something running. Now, when I do my post here, if we have a look in the request, you don't see the password, okay? So you don't see the username, you don't see the password. The field is changed, okay? The, the name field is changed, so the, 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 the malware is not able to, to, to see it, actually, uh, indeed, and the password is encrypted. So only the only the big IP is able to decrypt the password and then generate the summoner session for us ready. So this is one value, okay, of this use case. So if I just to conclude, it's uh, in the past, in the previous use case, we delegate all the authentication authorization to Azure AD and Azure AD present the login page with the login and the password. Now we like to leverage some APM features like HTTP from single sign on, I need to know the password for that. Or I want to encrypt the password field because I, I want to protect. Or I have a third part risk engine and I, I want to know the user risk uh, score. I need this information. So with this mod, the federated mod, I delegate a part of the authentication to this user. Last demo, with this use case, I can continue to use the Azure AD advanced feature like conditional access. So let's do it and close the close this page and let's let's connect with a user who has an, a, a conditional access policy assigned to him. Okay. I click again to the same application, but I will use another user. It could be based on a group. It can be based on on a on a on a on an application itself. Okay, here it's based on on a group. So this user has a conditional access that's that say please uh, please answer to the MFA challenge, the prompt on your phone. Okay, so the first step, of course, is I have to authenticate against APM. So far, so good. And then when I arrive. When I go back to the to Azure AD, you say, oh, you have to approve notification. Okay, so I have to approve on my phone. Wait one second. So it's approved and now I have access to my WordPress. Okay, so as you can see, I have a conditional access based on a user or based on a group here in my demo, and I can access to the to the WordPress. So the APM is just here, just one step in, in the authentication workflow in order to collect some information, in order to, to, to do some control check, and then 
the final step, the final insertion uh, issuer is as ready. Thanks for watching.